Hey, what's happening YouTube? This is your man, the cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters. And we're coming up with part two of doing fun, small projects that can make you a lot of bank. And this is the second part to the video of where I was going in showing you guys how to make a custom leather watch cuff band. I uh, haven't quite formulated a name for this yet, but that's what we're doing. So I am marrying a watch band to a leather cuff and we're going to come up with a nice real cool project for you guys just to redo a quick recap uh, i was telling you guys about how you can go onto the wish app and buy these watches like these for one dollar uh you can get these on the wish app for a dollar they come in a lot of different colors black blue green red uh white you can do a lot with those and it's only going to cost you a buck now this is another watch of mine just to let you guys know that i do practice what i preach this is one that i had made a while back let me see if i can get the lights right on this so you guys can actually see this uh but this is actually one that i made uh just kept it for myself just a nice simple design took that same dollar watch put it onto a nice little leather band and since this one was black and white I went ahead and accented with a white wax thread and just did the band in a traditional black. Simple pattern, nothing extravagant about it, and it, nice, it holds a nice shape too as well. Uh, and I used the same hardware that came on the original watch, so I didn't have to go out and spend any more extra money on hardware. You even use the same pins, the same pins and everything is right back in here. and. Uh, if I was to sell this, I would probably put a nice little $55 to $60 tag on it just to do something different. And nice small project, minimal investment with just scrap leather that I had left over from doing other projects and just pieced it all together. So a nice, fun, small project that can generate you a lot of money. Simple design, simple tooling work. I just used a meander tool. I don't know if you guys can see the meander tool uh, design that's in that. Maybe you can, maybe you can, I can't tell. But it was just something simple because I really just wanted to focus on the band. Just something to see if I can do it myself and make sure that it gets done. Now, to today's point, uh, and uh, there's a couple of things that I want to sh point out to you guys in the mock-up process or when you guys getting ready to mock your uh, patterns out or your templates out. One thing that you don't want, there are one thing, uh, let me back that up. One thing that you want to keep in mind, especially when you're making your own templates or your own patterns, there will come a time when you are trying to decide do you want to cut the line out or leave the line in. Let me fix this. Um, you want to cut the line out or you want to leave the line in. Now, when you're transferring your pad, your template to your leather, the only thing that I did where I cut the, I left the line in was on my cuff. Now, let me explain that real quick. The reason why I left the line in on my cuff is when I get ready to marry that secondary interior piece or that interior lining, when I put this on the belt sander, I am going to sand that line out. And that should be enough uh, because your line is going to be the width of your pencil point. Um, so make sure when you're transferring that from your poster paper or your template on paper, like what we did with the poster paper, that the, the tip of that pencil is going to be wider than the actual template on the poster board. So now I do that a lot in a lot of my pieces. I leave the line in, I cut the line in. So when I put it on the belt sander, the friction and the heat from that belt sander is going to give enough heat and friction to where it will marry those two pieces together perfectly that will help into my edging and burnishing process. Or by the time I get ready to burnish and edge it, it will just make that edge look real smooth, nice and clean. So, and I, I use that line in as a guide to know how far to sand in. Now, that's on the base part of this. Now, the only thing that I did differently where I cut the line completely out was on the straps 
that I'm going to use to anchor this to my uh, my back piece or to the cuff. And I'm, I'm putting this together so you guys can see how the it's going to generally look. Now, this is one process that you don't want to skip, and that is the mock process. Now, in mocking, and I'm going to go ahead and move, angle this camera down so you guys can see what's happening with the world. Now, let me get the lights right. So, and I hope this is bright enough for you to see it. The mock process, this or the mock step. I'm basically making sure that everything is going to line up great. This is why I've now done this several times and I skipped the phase because I went ahead and scribed my interior line here. So, and I, I did that. I put the watch and the straps on here together so I can see just how far I wanted to bring my my line in now the reason why i did this line because i'm going to do some simple tooling work around the edge that's going to give this particular piece just a little bit of character now on the inside part i'm just probably going to, well not probably i am i'm going to do a little texturing and i'm going to give you guys the numbers of the tools that i'm going to be using on this and then the only extra step and let me step away real quick and grab I just want to grab some caps so you guys can see how this is going to turn out and look. Now, here we go. So, so you have an idea of what's going to take place here. I'm going to come back with some rivets on this and I'm going to rivet these two pieces down or rivet the straps down on the cuff before I attach my liner. Now, the reason why I'm going to do, do this before I attach the interior lining on this is because I don't want the backside of my rivets to show. So when the customer sees this, I want them to see just one smooth slate of leather and they won't see the, in the, the rivet post through that. So that's just a real quick key right there. We're going to jump. Now I'm not going to do anything on the inside of this because I want the rivets to kind of sort of operate like a decoration. Now, if you can change this up, if you have dome rivets or if you want to do some type of other type of rivet uh, uh, accessorizing or uh, you can come back actually and do some really cool stuff. If you have some of those small glass stones that we did in another video, you can put that there if it's for a female and, or, or if you really want to just do uh, find you some antique hardware at one of these thrift stores or Goodwill or Salvation Army, any place like that, that you can find just some hardware that's small enough to put on this. Even if you wanted to go crazy and just do some bedazzling, I mean, hey, you know, it's your project, it's your vision. But for me, I'm just going to use the rivet caps as just a little small decoration. That's why I'm just going to go with some regular backgrounding on the inside and then just lay down a nice little tool work inside of that borderline. Now, to give you guys a quick cap of the tools that I'll be using, uh, let me find my readers so I can see. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Oh, my good and dirty. Go right there. All right. So with these the uh i'm going to use the c709 c709 it's one of the small camouflaging tools small camouflaging tools that's what i'm going to use and i'm just going to use that on the inside of that just to give it a nice little decoration on the inside not not all the way because the rest of the inside i'm going to use a backgrounding tool now this tool came from hide crafters and this is a PA005, PA005. It just looked like a bunch of little holes, little pebbles. I don't even know what you call this too because I don't even think high crafters are still in business anymore. But it's a nice little textured backgrounding tool that I like. I do know it's in the background and family. But it just look, resembles a lot of little small pebbles. And then the last tool that I'm gonna use on the outside border, just to give it a nice little kind of Aztec or Hispanic feel. Now this is a Craft Tool Pro. And this is this came from Tandy. And this is D as in David, 
2197. David 2197 is for the outside border. And this one came from Hyde Crafters, background in two, Paul Apple 005. That's P A 005, Paul Apple 005. And then the last one is another Tandy tool, the, a camouflaging tool, and this is C. 709 C709. So now you guys see what the, the mock looks like. This is pretty much what it's going to be looking like. Haven't came up with a color yet, but I think I'm going to use the airbrush onto this to give it a nice um, two-tone brown the outside and leave the inside with a nice little antique brown to match and pull all of that together. And then I'm going to um, um, give a nice little borderline on the straps and then rivet this all down. So the next stage after this is to go ahead and do the tooling work, find out where my rivets, rivet holes are going to be because that's what I, I want to accent those rivets and show those rivets that it is a nice secured cuff and then just come back and then I'm gonna drop some snaps onto the end. So whichever customer decides to buy this or whichever customer's wrist that uh, this particular piece will fit, they will have a one of a kind original Premier Leather Crafters uh, watch band cuff. So um, this is it for this video here. You guys stay tuned and then I'll come right back with another video on uh, pretty much getting it done once we start getting ready to put the tan coat on it to seal and lock in all of those colors and then after that you guys already know you can go either to premier leather crafters and google you can google premier leather crafters and google or you can look me up on my facebook page um on the premier leather crafters or you can go to instagram and hit me up and see the final pics on cowboy plc cowboy plc p as in paul paul larry curly PLC on Instagram. So with that, you guys keep it rocking. You're caught up with me as, as up until this point. I'm going to get the tool in this thing out and then come back with another video uh, of showing you the finished pieces with it completely airbrushed and ready to seal and ready to finish up and send this thing out to mail in the mail whenever it gets done. Hey, thank you for chilling with me these 12 and a half minutes. This is Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South, right here at Premier Leather Crafters. See you guys on the other side.